passes? I do. <laughs> I was impressed that Colin Burns didn't require it. I said that to Colleen. She's got me. I know. First, I want to say uh, hello to all of you and thank you all for coming here today. I must say that I stand before you this morning truly, <coughs> truly broken heart with an emptiness that I've never experienced before. As most of you know, it has only been 11 short months since we gathered here to say farewell to Brian. But the passing of one's mother is a different experience altogether. I would like to share a poem with you, and it's called The Dash. It's by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and, with, and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she had spent alive on earth and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. Mm -hmm. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? So I'd like to take a few moments to share with you my mom's dash. <clears throat> Mom was an amazing and strong woman, yet very quiet, never wanting to be in the limelight. Her smile, her smile knew no bounds, and her laugh, her laugh was the music of the soul. It would light up a room. It was in her nature. If you heard her laughing, you couldn't help but start laughing yourself. We used to love listening to her tell stories of her youth. While in grammar school, mom made friendships that would last her a lifetime. Three of her best friends were Mary Jane, Joan, and Audrey. And Audrey is right over here today. When those four ladies got together, all they did was laugh. They, t they would talk about how my grandfather would drop them off at the foot of the Peace Bridge. They'd walk across, across the Peace Bridge and proceed to hitchhike up to Long Beach for the weekend. <laughs> We would hear her tell stories of what a wonderful dancer mom was and how she loved a jitterbug. jitterbug. And from what we could gather, she was pretty good at it. She would tell of the stories of riding in the rumble seat of her brother Bill's car. Mom always liked to talk about how her mom, about her mom, and how she would take her take the bus downtown and go shopping with him. Later on, my mom would say, When I think about it now, my poor mother, I would drag her downtown and have her shop for hours. Hmm. Growing up, all our friends loved her. Our door on North Drive was an open one, and even if we weren't home, our friends would stop in just to say hello and talk. Rarely was it Mrs. Cannon before like Ma or Mrs. C. As you can imagine, Mom had her hands full with the five of us. She had four kids in five years, and then I came along three years later. I always like to brag that I was the plan child. <laughs> I'd get a rise, a rise of the eyebrows, but never an answer. Our father adored Mom. I can still hear him say, great legs, Foley. The five of us knew never to raise our voice to Mom in disagreement in front of him. That is, if we knew what was good for us. But as, but as all kids, we pushed that envelope, yet she rarely raised her voice. She was the glue that held our house together. When my parents built the house on North Drive, my mom's parents moved in with us. It became clear why Mom was the extraordinary woman she was. Our grandparents were two of the kindest, gentlest people you would ever know. Mom's youngest, Mom was the youngest of three children, and her two brothers, Frank, also known as Buzz, and Bill, passed away at a young age. 
Bill died in 1953 and Boston in 1966. Thus, Mom had the sole responsibility of caring for her parents. As us kids grew older, we realized just how stress stressful a life she had, balancing the duties of a wife, a mother of five, and her parents all under one roof. Yet she never complained, ever. In fact, in her whole lives, we never heard Mom say a negative or bad thing about anyone. She would always say, well, it's none of our business, or who knows what other people might, problems they may have. Hmm. When Mom married Dad, she married into the Cannon clan. They accepted her as one of her own. And through, through the years, when the Cannons would dip, get together, let's just say it was an event. <laughs> For those of you who are a Cannon or who know the Cannons, no explanation is necessary for that statement. For those of you who don't, no explanation is possible. <laughs> You'll just have to believe me. Seeing mom and no other siblings, she was always so grateful for them, enjoying the dynamic of it all. With 23 nieces and nephews, their parents and the five of us, you never knew what was going to happen. But, but, you, but you could always hear mom. She was the one laughing. These past few weeks, the four of us have been laughing about all the crazy things we put our mother through. Man, oh man, it was a lot. One example uh, I'd like to share with you is when Pam was working in uh, San Francisco and Mom when I went out to visit her. It seemed like on every street corner there was some guy selling something. And when we'd asked how much it was, they'd shut up. Fada, nenda. So we had the opportunity to visit the Muir Woods. So after we went up and walked all through the red woods, we came back down before we had to, before we left, uh, we had to use the restroom. Well, they only had porta potties, not mom's favorite, but she went in. So when she tried to get out, I was leaning against the door so she couldn't open it. <laughs> She's yelling, let me out of here. I'm saying, you want out, be five dollars. <laughs> She's yelling, Margie, if you don't open this door, our, our, my reply was, you get smile with me, ten dollars. <laughs> oh my, it was so funny. Well, at least to Pam and I and the surrounding people. <laughs> once, she, once she got out of there, she gave a little whack on the arm, but always forgive me. <laughs> Some of the nicknames we had for mom were humorous. The first was Spank or Spank. Brian came up with that one. Whenever we would call mom and ask what she was doing, she would just say, oh, I went here and went there. So Brian said, when he just said one day, so you were just spanking around. Uh, the other was the gal, and that was when Michael and Katie were little, they couldn't say grandma. So when grandma, mom would come to see him, they would say, to God, to God, to God, and she loved it. Mm -hmm. So many of the conversations went something like this, to God, what's, what's you doing? Just spanking around? <laughs> that was for years. For me personally, I called her my Pooh Bear. So many things we did together. One time when I, owned my first, when I owned my first house, I asked her to help me get rid of these long metal pipes. I didn't have a pipe cutter. They wouldn't take it at the, at the curb. So I had to get, grab them and take them to the scrap yard. So of course I called my mom. So I picked them up and put them in the back of my explorer and they're hanging out the window. And mom's hanging on for dear life. And yeah, if you just had the picture, she had her hood up, because I, I guess I neglected to uh, say that it was about 45 degrees out. And she's standing there hanging on to him, but she was a trooper and she just went along and let him, and just did it for me. She was just, she did so many things for me. It was just <laughs> incredible. But one of the most remarkable things about mom was her ability to see the good in any situation, no matter how, ba how bad. She taught us that faith made things possible, not easy. And that love, and that the love we give away is the only love we keep. That sometimes life is not the way it's supposed to be. It's just the way it is. It's the way you cope, cope with it. That's what makes the difference. She would say, remember that sometimes getting what you want is not always what you need. I've read that you must know where you are before you can know where you are going. It takes humility to ask, the patience to wait, and the faith that the answer will come. Life is a gift and offers us the privilege and the opportunity to give something back. Mom showed us that on a daily basis. I don't know if I'll ever be able to give back as much as I received from Mom. So Mom, as I say goodbye, I want you to know that my heart is thrilled for you. You are, re you are, re re you are reunited, reunited with Bill and Buss, your mom and dad, our dad, Brian, and all the rest of the family and friends who have gone before you. 
I know you could not live forever, but know that forever I 